together, the main factions are the Jesuits together with the Zionists. This is to summarize it in a very synthetic form. And what is the end goal of the top people running this whole planetary program? Of course, uh, the main goal is to maintain the privileges of the aristocrats who officially have lost their royalty status but are still there, apart from the English royal family, which still keeps that royalty status quite alive, but transforming the EU in the new sacred Roman Empire. Because this is the, really, in a way, also the full feeling of the scriptures uh, is something that has been even prophesied. So it's very interesting. Sure, the Club of Rome, uh, all of it, the Treaty of Rome 57, created the European Union. Absolutely, and this European Union now is enslaving and imposing on the European people all these immigrants, uh, the constant chaos in the streets. Every night in Rome, when uh, you were even around, Alex... There were huge demonstrations, were, yeah, clashes. The, but but there were clashes. There were actually uh, riots in the streets. There were immigrants who invade, invade buildings without having any permit. They just simply invade the building because it's empty. And then after that, you can't kick them out any longer. So uh, what the, the mondialists, what they do, they pick up the immigrants at the train station and they bring them to these buildings where they themselves actually break down the entrance and then they say, take over the building. I mean, this is what happens these days in Rome at night. Uh, so it, it's quite incredible, the situation. We have, uh, of course, uh, what's happening in Hungary, what's happening in all the borders. I mean, this huge immigration is made for us uh, to, 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 of course, uh, become uh, more controlled. And in the end, uh, you know, they will keep on making more money and we will keep on being more and more Sure, poor. sure. They don't want a homo homogeneous population. Take Mexico. If, if, if it was powerful and wealthy, the globalists want to bring in groups to divide it up so that the Mexicans could never get together politically and throw out the outside globalist group. You've got the outside global corporations bringing in their own client groups that, that will then basically work and speak for them like 21st century mercenaries. And that's all stated. It's all admitted. I want to go to some phone calls with Leo Zagami uh, here joining us before he leaves us, uh, though, in, in the next segment. Uh, Briefly, tell folks how they get your latest book, which I've read. It's excellent in English, The Last Pope, and why you say he's the last pope. Pope Francis, the last pope, because uh, nowadays the sacrality of the pope, uh, uh, the, the, the office of the pope has been destroyed after the resignation of Ratzinger. The last pope, because possibly after this pope, we will not have any more a Catholic church as we were used to, you know, and it will be this mondialist church, ecumenical church made of many different creeds. Uh, and so, I don't know if you noticed, but yesterday during the canonization, all the cardinals were dressed in white. And like the Pope, there was no difference. By the way, you so, said that, because we have like five hours of you talking, you said they'll probably get two or three popes, then a whole council. It's all about devolving power so no one can target the organization and having oligarch councils, and that's what a communist system would do, and that's exactly what they're doing now. In fact, I'm very worried, really, for the, the meeting that is going to be taking place between Obama and Putin, because Putin could be the only real, real opposition to this whole setup. But he probably just going to marry into the whole thing and, 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 you know, make this BRICS just the fake opposition to the World Bank. I mean, so uh, in that case... Uh, uh, let's say that the meetings that will take place in the next few days in New York are probably the most important meetings of the new millennium. Absolutely, and our reporters know that. We're going to be here covering it. Let me ask you this question, uh, Leo. I've studied Putin. He's obviously a hardcore guy, but he's trying to promote family, trying to promote having kids. They're, they don't yes. put fluoride in the water. The, the, his best friend's a newscaster. I'm going to skip this break, last one of the day. His best friend's a newscaster that basically sounds like my show. Uh, and I've been told by the head of RT... America years ago, the State Department didn't want me on there anymore, which is fine. It's not that big of a deal um, that they were upset that I was on there and that basically the directors of RT, both in Russia and here, are huge listeners. And I was told this by their producers, by their top people. 
and told this in L.A. I'm just going to leave it at that where they have one of their main offices and that the Russian government actually watches this show. Now, imagine you're told this. It's not a way to flatter me or get me to support them. I'm not in with the Russians. They don't need me. I'm just promoting national sovereignty, anti-globalism, which allows Russia to continue on. I mean, I want Russia to be there. I want America to be there. I want diversity in countries. I want sovereignty. I'm just a patriot for humanity, a patriot for sovereignty, a patriot for due process, a patriot for firewalls to tyranny. That's what countries are. But, you know, I was told this five years ago, oh, you're just, you know, six, seven years ago, I thought, oh, you're just wanting me to, you know, be flattered so I support you. And they're like, no, no, we're not. And now I've seen, because uh, these Russians were in awe every time they came here. Uh, then I've seen now out of Russian television, it's like it's Alex Jones on Russian TV. It looks like the Russians might have caught an anti-New World Order bug. I know that Putin started secretly meeting with Alexander Schultz and Nietzsche a lot, reportedly apologized to him. Now he's become a big Orthodox Christian, like underground, uh, and thinks he's got to, you know, save Christendom. Or is that PR bull? Or, or, or is this how God works in mysterious ways? Orthodox Church up until now has been the only real opposition to the Catholic uh, uh, agenda, which uh, is uh, really becoming anti-Christian by all nature. And you see in this yourself. So if the Orthodox Church is genuine, in that case, we are in front uh, of a great clash uh, that is about to happen because uh, it started in Ukraine between Catholics and Orthodox is now manifesting to a full scale with this uh, second Cold War. So I think that we will see in the next few days in New York if this is really a charade or if there is really about uh, to, to start something that could become a clash of infinite. Will you come on with us Monday after we've seen what happens this weekend and tomorrow and give us your analysis on what you think it means, whether it was real or not? Sure, why not? I will be fully available for that, and it's a pleasure to be on InfoWars because nowadays the Italian media will never have me again on. Yeah, that's a whole uh, other subject. I looked it up and found the news articles. You didn't make a big deal about it. You actually got grabbed by uh, Vatican officers, taken to a facility uh, outside Rome, and then it, and then thrown back on the street. I mean, they are really after you. Yeah, well, I mean, it's incredible. I mean, to be brought actually forcibly in an ambulance in, a, in in an hospital and then apparently you you think you are in a hospital and suddenly you have a doctor who is actually a priest arriving in front of you uh, both with the doctor thing and the priestly thing here and then a bunch of monks arriving in the morning i, I mean it was pretty scary definitely so i, I i'm trying to uh, keep myself now low profile and avoiding these kind of problems uh, and uh, simply by not involving myself anymore in italian politics because uh, it's a lost cause in any case that's right. You ended up uh, running for office, being involved with the Nationalist Party, or, or, or give me the proper name, and I and I and then I guess it they was were... uh, basically uh, the it's a party of the Berlusconi coalition known as the Grande Sud, which is basically a party for the South of Italy, which uh, was uh, quite prominent a few years ago. And of course, your family's been quite prominent in politics. That's one reason you were also given entrance into some of these more secret orders. Yes, uh, my grandfather was a senator. He even marched uh, on Rome with Mussolini back in the days, uh, and uh, not that uh, that can be something. But in, in any case, uh, I have had the possibility of being an insider. And uh, the, the crazy thing is that when I actually went against the president of Italy live on TV, the pro producer of the show on Rai Uno, which is the main Italian state channel, came to me and said, how is possible you're doing this to us? You are one of us. You are bourgeois. You are not a peasant. You are not one of them, of the masses. You have to be with us. And I said, I'm not. Forget it. So, I mean, that was it for me in Italy. And immediately after that, soon after, I was uh, basically, they broke down into my house. They broke my, my door in the morning. All kinds of things happened, which uh, I will not uh, now describe because it will take time from your transmission. But it wasn't pleasant. I mean, democracy is inexistent when you oppose the system. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's go to some phone calls uh, here. We're going to take you to the next segment. Then we've got another special guest on geoengineering, breaking into the mainstream news with the California situation. Uh, let's go to uh, Dion in Illinois. Thanks for holding. You're on the air with Leo Zagami. Yeah, uh, Argentina writer uh, Pedro Salons claimed that uh, Fidel Castro made a prophetic quote in 1973. He said the U.S. will come to talk to us 
when they have a black president and the world has a Latin American pope. And Fidel Castro had a a Jesuit teacher, and uh, when he went to Cuba, they changed the book. So I don't know if you know what the books were about and how did Fidel Castro know. It's funny you say that. I remember hearing that over a decade ago. I don't really place it where. I remember hearing what you just said. Great question. Leo, what's your intel on on, on the fact that the Pope went to there and didn't criticize their half a million political dissidents in jail, but came here and criticized our presence? How could they criticize? Fidel Castro was brought up by the Jesuits, uh, and his brother was even more brought up by the Jesuits because he went to the, to the Jesuits uh, since elementary school. I mean, we're talking here about people who were educated by the Jesuits for their agenda. So, of course, they knew what was about to happen. Good uh, question, Dion. It's unbelievable. And again, we're not saying it's Catholic and, folks. And plus, it's... plus, Castro is a 33 degree Freemason. And uh, this is not known. Also, Che Guevara, they think that he was the great, great rebel, which probably he was in, in his head. But they are all 33 degree Freemasons. The Freemasons, Freemasonry has never been persecuted in Cuba during the conflict. Well, I've read Che Guevara's book, and he calls uh, Indians, natives, brown people, subhuman, idiots, uh, morons, mentally retarded. And complains that Latin America could take over, but the people are too stupid. And that's that, that, a that's not true. B it's very racist. People don't understand that Che Guevara was a super hyper elitist racist pig. And I see and brown skinned Mesoamericans wearing Che Guevara shirts. I want to slap them upside the head. Sorry, go ahead. Well, now you're going to see this pope becoming the leader of all South America because South America is full of liberation theology and of communists. And they're all gathering together with the Pope Francis in this new world order setup. So, I mean, we don't really stand a chance when Obama himself said that he will bypass Congress for Agenda 2030. Well said. Another quick question. Uh, let's talk to uh, Nick in Pennsylvania. Go ahead. You're on the air. Alex, hi. How you doing? Good, brother. Go ahead. Okay, I have a really important question for Leo. First, I want to say, last time I talked to you, Alex, your uncle was sick. Uh, it was Christmas time. I want to say, God bless you, my friend. I'm sorry to hear that you lost him. Sorry, too. Thanks for your support. Um, what was um, the, the question, question, brother? I have for, the question I have for Leo is, um, I did listen to the Pope today in Washington. I heard the whole broadcast. Actually, I myself am Catholic, and there's some things about this Pope I actually disagree with. Now, this Pope... Stay there. Stay about- there, Nick. I'm going to come back to you. Then Jeff, Mickey, and Jim, I want to hear what you disagree with him on. I don't think the guy's a Catholic. I mean, he doesn't sound like anybody else I know that was... I mean, he sounds like a Che Guevara or something. We'll be right back. We've never seen such enthusiastic promotion of the Pope. There's always underhanded snipes and attacks on Catholics. And that's because clearly it wasn't something the globalists totally controlled. Now they love it because they got control of it. Nick and PA, go ahead. Thanks for holding your own with Leo Zagami. You were uh, getting into, you're a Catholic, and you heard some things you didn't agree with. Go ahead. Absolutely. And also, I'm a Philadelphia resident. I'm hoping I can get through to your show on Sunday, because he's due here in Philly on Saturday and Sunday. But this is my question for you, Leo. Um, When I listened to the Pope today, um, he talked about immigration and people coming into America. And then he brought up the golden rule. And to me, by doing that, it's like he's trying to put a guilt trip on America. On America, he's trying to put a guilt trip on our country that we have to bring in these illegals or we're bad guys. So this is my question to you. I'm really passionate because I'm a patriot like Al. Oh, yeah, we've been more open than anybody. We've given more free stuff, and then we get blamed for not doing enough. That's wrong. Absolutely, and I'm just tired of seeing the American people getting trashed, and we are every day. But this is my question to you, Leo. Will this pope take 10,000 of our illegals into his country? Well, uh, this is what happens also in Italy. Here, uh, he pulled up uh, the same stunt, and in the end, uh, he ended up guesting basically, I think, uh, six or eight people inside the Vatican, saying he was guesting a couple of families, giving the example. And that's it, basically, because, you know, uh, he wanted to uh, make us feel like we have to guess them in our houses, you know. So everybody now in every region of uh, Europe has to prepare 
to uh, uh, give their everything to these immigrants, to these refugees who are arriving. This is, uh, of course, uh, a technique that is using both in Europe and in the U.S., and it seems like it's working, and uh, it's going to be very difficult to stop him when we have uh, these fake conservatives uh, like the Republicans who are not really doing anything to stop him. Because, I mean, when you hear the comments of uh, Shepard Smith or people like this, really, I mean, I put my hands in the Oh, that's what's sick. I appreciate your call, Nick. Great point. We're going to do five more minutes.